Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, let's say that it's the late 1950s and you want to make a tape recording of the kids or perhaps play back some pre-recorded tapes that you have. So what do you do? Well, you get out the tape recorder, which is a beast sometimes. Now, let me preface this by saying this particular model, which is a beast, is 1968. So you'll get the point. You'll see where I'm going. Go with me here. Go with me here. Anyway, so you get out your tape recorder and you're going to need speakers, of course. So let's go ahead and lay it down on its back. And we're going to take these speakers off like this. And they kind of hook down there. By the way, it's been a while since we've had this tape recorder on the show. This is my first full-size tape recorder. Well, since I've been doing this show. I mean, we had, I had a tape recorder growing up. Anyway, so you got to plug it in. So we're going to do that. You need to set up the speakers. And in the speakers, you've got the speaker cords. I'm not going to go through all of this other than to sort of illustrate my point. So you've got your speakers. Cables unwound, plugged in, power cord. Now, of course, you've got to thread the tape. There's the big one. By the way, I've misplaced my hubcap deal, so I'm using it as a flat back tape recorder right now, and which I've kind of grown to like. I used to like them standing upright, but I've really grown to like them like this. I think that's cool. Um, no, you need a supply reel over here. I mean, a take up reel over here, your supply reel down here. Then, of course, you're gonna have to thread the tape once you get the reel on which it's stuck down here and just got to fiddle with it. I'm terrible about doing this, by the way. So, okay, so we got it going there. Now we need to thread the tape through here. And this is the worst part. We need to somehow get it in here. There's little loops in here where you can thread it in here. Or, you know, if you're doing it the lazy way, you can just go like this and then put the cap on right there. But, oh, let's say you want to do it the, the real, you know, the good way. Let me double up your tape here. Now, some guys that are good at this will do it in five seconds. I am not one of those people. Nice. And then you double it over because you're an idiot like me. And then you have to redo it like that. Then spin it around a couple times. Get it to take. Okay. And now you're ready to... What the heck was I even going to record? What was I going to do? It's been so long, you can't even remember. So RCA Victor says, you know what? There's an opportunity in the market for something to remedy this problem. This is like one of those infomercials where the person's having an overly difficult time and it's like in black and white. They're like, those are funny. But anyway, so rather than go through all of the stress and headache of that, enter the RCA Victor tape recorder system, tape cartridge system. This is approximately 1960-ish. And if this looks familiar and you're thinking to yourself, gosh, did we not do this already? Kind of yes and kind of no. So we, I found in the wild a very rare stereo version of this. This is the same one essentially that Techmoan did a video on a couple years ago. But I found a stereo one, which are super rare. And I got an amazing deal on it. We did a show on it. In fact, I'll show you some clips here in a second. We took it apart, saw how it worked, and demonstrated all the functions the best we could, but it was non-operational. As you can imagine, sitting around for that long, things are bound to go wrong, and they did. So I struck a deal with my friend Peter, aka Fartemark, to do a trade. He had this mono one, and he had been looking for the stereo one. It was sort of his holy grail device. And we struck a deal, a simple trade. I would send him the stereo one in non-working order. He would restore this one to complete working order, which it is, and we're gonna fully demonstrate it here, and throw in this 1968 tape deck. So I thought that was an excellent deal because at the time I didn't have a reel-to-reel. -reel. Unfortunately, this thing had a really bad uh, time in transit. And you can see the wood is split and we had a, a major problem here. If you remember, we had to go in there and you know try to fix this, and it was a major nightmare. There's bent. This whole hub is bent. It's canted to the to the right. So we had all kinds of problems. At the end of the day, I was able to get it working, and it's it's a decent you know solid performer. But I'm glad to have the Magnavox. So I was really excited to get this guy back, and I thought we'd take a look at it.
through the years, RCA Victor has built a tradition of continually introducing new ideas and products to bring new thrills and pleasures to millions in home entertainment. In keeping with that tradition, RCA Victor now offers a completely new development for new listening enjoyment with tape. Watch this. How long do you think it takes the average person to take off one tape and thread in a new one? Two and two-fifth seconds? Thirty-two and one-fifth? Or a minute and ten seconds? Let's find out. Ready, set, go. Two and two-fifth seconds exactly. How did she do it? Here's how. The new RCA Victor conceived, developed, and designed tape cartridge for easy magazine loading to make playing a tape as simple as or even easier than playing a record. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today this is going to be something you may have never seen before, unless you watch Tecmo and then you have seen it. This is a really cool failed format, a unique thing. This is the RCA sound tape recorder. Now, yes, I'm aware, you know, Techmoan did do a video, a very good video about this technology. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail on mine, but unlike him, I have the rare stereo version. So his was mono, mine is stereo. They're harder to find. And this thing is an immaculate, immaculate cosmetic condition. So this is the approximately 1960 RCA Victor IYB-20 monural tape cartridge system. This was the entry level product in this range. Now, these systems, and I'm gonna tell you kind of why they exist. The biggest thing was RCA wanted to capitalize on the apparent need for people to be able to play tapes without threading and spooling tapes. And you know this really allowed you to do it because what you can literally do is, and we'll take a look at it closer in a minute, just stick the tape in and you're ready to go. There's no threading. It's, you know, the idea of having a tape and a cartridge was a novel thing. This bears striking resemblance to, you know, the compact cassette that we would see years later. But in essence, you have a very convenient way to play tape. And we're going we're to take a look at this. We're going to do some audio tests. And we're also going, you know, to do direct feed audio tests as well. This will be really interesting. So... This one, I don't like the color scheme of this as much as my stereo one, but at the same time, it does kind of have that vibe, that 50s vibe to it. I, I love this sort of Art Deco stuff down here. That looks really, really cool. RCA Victor. Peter touched it up. It's got, you know, the, the trim on there. He also, you know, replaced, you know, capacitors inside and really got it in working condition. He had this actually modified at one point to be a stereo machine, which is interesting. By the way, the mono unit has a speaker and the grill on the front, just like the stereo, but the, the lid on the mono unit is just a piece of plastic, although it does have some interesting texture. I don't know why I find that stuff interesting. It doesn't have the speaker in the lid like the other one we did had. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't throw it. Okay. So let me kind of give you the tour of this unit. So like I said, he had modified it for stereo because the head is actually a stereo head in this. So he was able to make use of an extra output he created back here. And with the preamp, you could actually get stereo out of it. Unfortunately, it was impossible to ground it. So there was a constant hum, even though he tried chassis grounding and a bunch of other techniques. It just wasn't going to work. Okay, so these punch outs here are wider than the jack because of the fact that this mold was made use for the stereo model as well. So we've got a mono input, mono output, speaker on and off. There's also sort of an aftermarket power switch right here, a mic input. I always like how they spell mic. And I know there's two ways to spell mic, but I always spell the MIC, as well as an on off volume knob. On the back, you've got the power and the label as well up here we've got a tape counter we've got a speed control three and three quarters or one and seven eighths three and three quarter inch per second was is the same speed that was used for eight track by even this point they were able to get good high fidelity audio at that slower speed typically when you're dealing with tape you know seven and a half inches per second was the gold standard the more media 
the higher the quality like we've talked about before. But through the use of more advanced tape formulations and components, they were able to get a three and three quarter inch per second device to sound really dang good. Now, why would you want that? What's the motivation to go slower? The motivation is you can fit more media. So these tapes, you know, you could fit, you know, 60 minutes of music on them as opposed to, you know, if it was going seven and a half inches per second, there'd be a lot less. Now, why don't you just add more tape? Maybe the question. The problem is you're confined by the size. So there's a trade off here. Well, we want the cartridge to be, you know, easy to handle, fairly small. We want the device to be fairly compact, which it is still surprisingly compact. So we, we, you know, they decided we want the tape to be this big and we can get 60 minutes of music if we keep the speed at three and three quarter inches per second. If you want to get more, more time off of that, you can go down to one and seven eighths inches per second, which is the same speed as a compact cassette would be, you know, you're in the next following decade after this format, but you're going to lose the high fidelity. It's going to be a low fi good for speech. And that's about it down here. Are the controls we've got a record switch. We've got a rewind, stop, and play. There's no fast forward. There's a track select. This is a four track tape format. And you've got one AB or AB2, depending on how you want to do it. This is a cathode ray tube right here, which is very, very cool when it's lit up. I'll show you that in a minute. Looking at the transport mechanisms, you will see a beefy vintage looking stereo head, even though it's a mono unit, pads, raise head, Pinch roller, cap stand, just like a compact cassette. Really, there's not that much difference to it. That is the unit. It is hefty. It is a tube or valve amplified unit. So you get that warmth, and that's a really, really cool thing. By the way, uh, here's the mic. The stereo unit came with two mics. Pretty simple device. When I first saw these before I had learned about this, I thought these were little satellite speakers. Look at that. Isn't that not cool? That is just super neat. A unique style that, you know, we didn't ca we didn't carry on. It's got the old 50s RCA logo. Got the old logo there. Some of the uh, later iterations of these uh, tapes use the 70s logo, the, the more modern RCA logo. This is one of the original type tapes. But what I was saying about the record is one of the defects that hasn't been overcome in this unit is it cannot record. Now that's not a deal breaker and I'll explain why, but basically the recording coil is defective in this unit and it's not something you're gonna find very often. This is a pretty rare device. You're gonna find a couple of them on eBay at any given time. Coming across them in the wild in your local area can be a little bit tricky. Now let's talk about the tape a little bit. Again, it bears striking resemblance to a compact cassette, although I wish I had one with me, but it's much bigger. I mean, it is, it's a larger tape. But the same basic premise exists, the tape is uh doesn't come out of the device it's not pulled out like a vhs videotape it stays in there has a maintained tape path and then the head is put into alignment literally by you inserting the tape and what's interesting unlike a compact cassette i did it completely wrong put the top in first like that and then the tape goes down there you'll see the tape does the the head doesn't come into con doesn't like push up into the tape like a compact cassette it stays pretty tight. So the alignment is very important of when you put this in there. That's why there's so many guide paths. And this back here, this bar pushes down on this device right here. This is a spring loaded brake. There's like a metal triangular piece here that keeps these spools from spinning freely when it's not in use. So that brake is, you know, keeps tension on those reels until you place it in and then it's released so the tape can play. And that's about it. Another thing Peter did that was really genius with this is he actually uh, dismantled these, took out the old ferric oxide tape and put in some brand new old stock, very high quality tape. So these have new media and they've been re-recorded. You can buy pre-recorded albums. There's you know quite a few that come up from time to time on eBay. It's kind of pricey. You can also buy new old stock blanks and make your own. You can even... It's, you'll notice that's quarter inch tape. You can even take your reel to reel and make your own. The only trick is, unlike a reel to reel, where the tape is playing on the top of the, so like think about this. So let's say you've got your tape player. What side of the tape is the, is the information? It's gonna be on this side, on the top side. Well, see what I mean? The top of the tape isn't what's being read here. It's the bottom, it's the outer edge. So you would need to record your tape and then re-spool it inverted in order to do that. 
Um, RCA did sell an adapter that allowed you to use little five inch reels on here as well. I have not come across that yet. Peter even went so far as to make his own record label. This has got to be the only record label, Far to Mark Records, that is doing um, that is doing his own thing here and making new records on this format. And again, it does have the new tape stock in there. Just super cool, guys. I mean, this is just this stuff is so awesome. I love this. This is so so neat. And it's kind of hard to tell, but the, it's really pitch dark tape. They're very high quality stuff. And uh, I love the details he puts into it. I love the adaption of the RCA Victor logo with, with his little Fox logo and the gramophone. <laughs> I think that's awesome. So that's pretty much it. It's a, it's a fairly simple device. Obviously, we can't test the recording, unfortunately, but we can test playback. And uh, one of my favorite things on this format is the Belcanto demo. Belcanto is a competing brand that made these. So um, let's go ahead and play a little bit of this. So to play a tape, we're gonna flip this little switch over here. You'll see that beautiful CRT on the bottom come to life. It's literally just a cathode ray tube laying on its side there. Beautiful fluorescent light. Were you whistling at me? Why no, tape it easy. Don't you hear it? Tape it easy? Oh, you must be looking at my new Bellomatic tape cartridge recorder. This is how to tape it easy with the new Bellomatic stereo tape cartridge recorder that plays and records stereo on the tape you never have to touch. This is the world's most lightweight. Only 18 pounds. Compact. No larger than a woman's vanity case. Complete all-in-one stereo tape recorder. Notice the second speaker over here in the lid. Except and there's a built-in stereo amplifier and speaker in the main unit. Here, why don't you let me show you how easy it is to record stereo onto tape you never have to touch. Not now. There are people watching us. Well... Well, maybe we should first let them listen to stereo on this new Velomatic. You know, just to get things started off right. Okay. All set. Here we go. That was great. For those of you who just came in, you're listening to stereo on the Bellomatic tape cartridge recorder. The new easy way to play and record stereo on the tape you never touch. Easy does it. Now it's fun to make your own recording with the Bellomatic tape cartridge recorder. Flip, it's in. Flick, it's on. Anyone can do it. New tape cartridge loads in two seconds. Tape it easy and get more fun for your money with the new tape cartridge. Record up to one hour of stereo, two hours of monaural at the regular three and three quarter speed. For long play voice recording at the slower speed, you get two hours of stereo, four hours monaural recording time. That's a lot of playing time. Which reminds me, play some more stereo music on the Bellomatic tape cartridge recorder. Ready? Okay, so that's the gist of how it operates. But don't worry, we're not done, not by a long shot, because I promised you a direct feed sound test and I am going to deliver just that. I do want to mention though, another modification, I had mentioned that this was a mono unit and that it had been converted to stereo at one point and then converted back to its original mono state. However, he did an interesting thing in that he took, I want to show you kind of zoom in by the way. One thing that he did that was really cool is he wired both channels to that mono output. As you can see there, it is a stereo head, like I said before. But rather than just play the one channel on the one speaker, it now will blend both. So what we're getting on our output over here is a blended output. So you get both channels as mono. So let's go ahead and do a direct feed. How are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to start by cabling this in such a way that we'll be able to hear everything. So I'm going to take my output jack here. I've got a splitter cable, RCA mono to stereo from here i'm going to put in an adapter so again stereo on this end rca to eighth inch stereo trs for a recording device i'm going to be using this now this device by the way you like reticus stuff stay tuned we got some really cool devices coming in the near future from them this thing is awesome i listen to this every single night this is what i have this sd card i've got all of my 
uh, ambient stuff on at night. It's a fantastic unit. But it also has a good line input recording device. So you can see it's got the line input. Unlike my nice Zoom H2N microphone that has a line in jack, but it doesn't actually it doesn't actually handle line in audio levels. This one does. The downside is it converts everything to the highest resolution I can record is 128K MP3, which is fairly highly compressed, but still accurate enough to show you what you're listening to. Keep in mind that YouTube is compressing everything as well, so it doesn't matter that much. I wish it was uncompressed. I could do a line input to my computer, but this is more convenient. So for this, these types of things, it's really an adequate thing. So let me go ahead and make a uh, direct, we'll use the other tape here um, to make a direct feed sound test and you can hear it for what it is in all of its glory, the whole sound quality. Put your headphones on if you got them. Here we go. down. Ten seconds to firing. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, guys, and that is going to do it for today. I've been looking forward to doing this show for months now. Very, very excited. And again, very grateful for my partnership with Fartemark, a.k.a. Peter, and uh, his knowledge we've, you know, benefited from extensively on this channel. I would also recommend that you don't hesitate to go over to his channel, uh, Fartemark, and subscribe as well. I think that would be hugely beneficial for you. And if you, speaking of subscribing, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do that before this video is over. I would highly recommend it. Also, hit the bell notification, select all, so you don't miss a single thing, including our live shows where we do giveaways. I also want to thank those of you that have helped support the channel through our Buy Me a Coffee service and through our merchandise. You can see the merchandise shelf down below, which is now working again. <laughs> and you can buy shirts and all kinds of cool stuff. All of that helps to support the channel so we can invest in cool stuff to bring you two times each week. How many shows, record player shows, tech shows, are giving you two shows a week, every Wednesday, every Sunday, you're gonna get a great show. Speaking of which, stay tuned to our next show, but that's gonna do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting, we'll see you next time.